Hey guys, this is Chaos Beaver Tape, and today you join me for episode 3 of Solar Civilization. And our first mission today is sending our first probe into space, I believe. Um, I don't really remember, although I did the last episode yesterday because I'm just playing KSP. Anyway, um, this is going to go to uh, Space with Material Space um, so that it can do, so because it can finally test out the Material Space that we, I don't think we sent for space yet. And then it will land. That's what's slightly sticking out of the fairings. There are landing legs just kind of clipped through the fairings, but they're fine. They won't break anything. Um, so that we can take material space from wherever wherever it lands, preferably on land as opposed to sea, because it's kind of tall and it'd be kind of annoying if it fell over and it broke, because water is very destructive in this game. Anyway, the launch has been sped up as usual because there is quite a lot in this episode. Um, because well, as I've said, I'm going to be um kind of, you know, doing quite a lot of science in the initial episodes to get somewhere interesting. But you may have noticed, as I ditched that stage, it's still on the map. It is because it is a probe. In the last episode, I finished with um, the start of my project to reuse rockets, and today I'm going to try and soft land that on the ocean. That's why I keep um, checking if it's uh, checking its altitude by hovering over it, because um, I want to get into orbit before it hits the, uh, before it hits the ocean so that I can... Uh, control land it on the ocean or at least try to so I'll switch to that now um, a quick loading scene and it should be going incredibly fast now yeah see 1100 meters a second because physics hasn't been acting on it yet so we will burn up but uh, well we will, there will be um, flames but we won't burn up because we're not going that fast um, and apparently someone is playing Dota 2 um, should probably edit yeah I don't even know that guy it's odd, I have like no Steam friends because I just never get round to it. So yeah, anyway, um, so yeah, we're going to descend uh, and get some pretty hefty Mac effects because we're going pretty fast. Um, and it's kind of hard to find the optimal time to burn. I've got the orbit info open just just cause. So I'm going to initialize slowing down first. That's why that top tank, uh, that top tank, I, d I disallowed fuel fuel flow during launch so that I could use it for landing. It's only 45 litres, but I suspect that will be enough to slow me down before I hit the ocean, at least hopefully. Uh, but the trick is slowing down right to hit the ocean. Um, but yeah, and because it's quite a tall stage, if I land vertically it'll probably fall over and break anyway, so that's something I'm going to have to solve in the future, or maybe just land on land with landing legs. Um, I said land a few times in that sentence. That's the, the British language is fantastic because you can just use the w same word so many times. Anyway, we're slowing ourselves down, probably not quite enough because this is the ocean, but then too much, and then not enough, and then too much. It is very hard to judge. Then I ran out of fuel and everything was destroyed in the ocean. So that was close, but, yeah, but no cigar. Anyway, back to the probe. And I'm going to quickly observe the material space. This is covered in batteries because today I want to... Uh, I want to get the um, the first solar panels you get because I do need power generation to go really be the beyond kind of curb in orbit um, and to keep satellites in orbit, which is you know pretty important. But anyway, I want to put this down kind of in the desert or on the grasslands or just somewhere where I can get science not from the ocean because um, the ocean is fairly deadly to tall crafts as you saw with um, my stage landing. This is in the dark, but there's lots of green lights. Um, a thing I realised recently is in the last update, they allowed you to change the colours of uh, like floodlights that you can put in your spacecraft, so I'm sure I'll have some fun with that. Uh, yeah, I've got to, yeah, I've, or maybe on stations at least. Uh, yeah, I've got plans for stations. Um, well, that'll all be in fairly, hopefully not too far away episodes. I want to kind of move into interesting stuff fairly quickly. Uh, but anyway, we're falling back to Kerbin. I think I may have sped this up. Possibly. I usually do spe uh, speed these things up, but maybe not. Oh no, I don't think I did. Um, anyway, yeah, so as I was saying, we're going to need to uh, gain some more material science from on the ground, um, because we will need 90 science to unlock some new batteries, a few other things, and mainly solar panels so that we can go to the moon, because that will be our first, uh, our first port of call. Eventually I'd like to set up a moon base. I'd, I want bases freaking everywhere, and you can see at the top I do have Kerbal alarm clocks installed because, well, I will need Kerbal alarm clocks if I have bases everywhere, um, or it'll get very hard to manage. Uh, 
that's uh, one of the fantastic things about KSP is you do get some brilliant mods and one day most of these things will probably be added. I don't know about things about Ferrum Aerospace or Deadly Entry because that does change kind of the core mechanic of the game. So I, th I, it's nice not having Ferrum Aerospace uh, in like the stock game a lot of the time because it does make it easier to fly. Although because Ferrum Aerospace makes the lower atmosphere less soupy, it does make launch vehicles more capable. So it's it's it makes shuttles a lot better actually. I found anyway. Um, and it does make SSTOs very easy, um, and is in rocket powered SSTOs, just like a single stage can get to orbit quite easily with very low cargo. I should make a video about that. Nah, it's, it's just literally you can get, um, two big fuel tank, uh, two, uh, yeah, two, just basically two fuel tanks per LVT-45 engine on it, a probe on top, get to orbit. It's, uh... And that, you can do that without very much space. It's that's the thing about having a ten times smaller planet is you do get kind of quite a bit of uh, it, it being fairly easy to get space, which is good because I did rescale Kerbin series and those were very difficult. Took a lot of effort. Took me like a week to build each launch vehicle, so it was a bit it was a bit draggy. Although I did really enjoy that series. I may do some more stuff with Kerbal uh, with rescale Kerbin, but I don't know. I'm doing Black Hawk in this series right now and. Um, playing a lot of this series because it's just how I play KSP but because I'm doing it as an episode as as a series and um, <laughs> the hope is that people will watch it I can put more kind of story stuff behind it without just like feeling kind of dumb for doing story by myself but uh you know it'll be it'll be fun for everyone as I keep saying because I'm unbelievably excited about this as you can probably tell from my monotone tired voice I am tired because it's late but I felt like recording this because I have just footage building up because I'm like, play KSP, ha, ah, loads of footage. And um, I haven't even uploaded episode 2 yet because I uploaded episode 1 yesterday and it's already episode 3. Hopefully this will die down a bit, but now there will be more frequent uploads, which is ironic because I made that channel update thing saying, oh guys, I'm not going to be able to upload series videos much. And now it's like, actually, yeah, I probably can because... There's less kind of defined goals, so it's easier. Anyway, I will deploy the landing legs. I really should have sped that up. That was quite a long time, but I got to talk about a lot of things, so that's good. Anyway, um, we will descend towards the ground. I've ditched the heat shield, but the drag on the heat shield is ridiculous, so it's pinned to my craft for a while. Um, and in a second, something odd will happen. Fraps will crash, and this will freeze up. Um, but then I'll but then I recorded the surface thing again, so you know you just miss it touching down. So when will that be? Fraps is being a huge dick right now. Sometimes I'll be watching a YouTube video and recording a game, and I'll be playing a game. I'll hit the record button, and it'll just record the YouTube video. Anyway, yeah, see there, Fraps screwed up some more. Crash my game, crash the recording. Um, thought I'd cut more of this out. Wait, no, I cut this. What the? Oh, there you go. Um, yeah. Uh, so. Here we are on the ground, and I'm just ob observing that, well, there's my materials bay, an extra 7.5 science, and there's the 25 I got from space. So let's uh, recover the vessel and um, move on to the next mission. Or unlock something? No, I have another mission. Have I not cut the... Oh, yeah, no, no, it cuts now. There you go. Now I'm just going to go into space again. I'm going to go into a higher orbit um, and try and get quite a bit of science so I can unlock some solar panels. Anyway, no science to be gained from that, so we will launch. I have cut this launch out because it is fairly standard and I don't even put myself into an orbit. So, um, yeah, it is just a matter of... And I do take a mystery goo report on the way up, so that is why one of them is gone when I have cut this out, which will be fairly soon. Uh, Jebediah Kerman is back, um, raised from the dead. We used dark magic in the engineer's room. The engineers were like, oh yeah, we just discovered dark magic if you want it. I was like, oh, that's good, that's good. Anyway, let's take the materials bay. Um, just take it, not take a report, just steal the materials bay. And the mystery goo, oh, the other mystery goo I took uh, further down as well. Um, because, well, yeah, I've already done it up here, and so I've done all the EVA reports, so I only really get the uh, materials bay from up here. But that is still quite a lot of data, quite a lot of scientific value, enough to tell me about... Um, about well about solar solar rays solar radiation solar energy how it affects materials and enough to build solar panels when I bring it back to Kerbin 
and that is my story, and I'm sticking with it. Yeah, um, that the yeah. I try to think about how this would happen really in real life. Anyway, I believe I sped this bit up because it is just falling back to Kerwin, and we've already had a long time of that. And I have actually left the periax at four kilometers because the engineers keep going on at me about uh, well, keep going on uh, at the uh, astronauts about. We need to make sure the damn heat shields work, man. We're going to the moon soon, so we left it at four kilometers, so we come back steep and hard and fast. And it went all right. And I'm landing in this huge crater that they've also asked me to research. Um, but it turns out that isn't Highlands, that is Shore. So um, I don't get any data from it, because I've already looked at the shores. Um, they were disappointed, that, the, but it tells them that uh, the shores were blasted up the mountains when the whatever formed that crater happened. It, uh, one of the new asteroids obviously hit and just flung shore all over the mountain, so now this just counts as shore, so who cares about it? A uh, tacky crossfade later, and let's go to the moon. We're going to fly by the moon. Uh, this is one of my favorite launch vehicle designs, where I use a solid rocket booster, slightly throttled down, because you can throttle it down in the VAB now. Well, that will remain fixed, but you can pick your thrust. Anyway, so we'll ditch the first stage, which was just a cheap booster. Um, the government have been kind of saying that the moon sounds expensive so we want to cut it back so I have been working on reusable rockets for them I have also been working on um, yeah solid rockets because that's much cheaper than liquid fuel although this top stage has to be quite a lot bigger but anyway um, yeah and I'm using a KW Vestra engine very uh, it's it's a good it's one of my favorite engines because it has a middle ground it's about 120 kilonewtons of thrust, and there isn't really one like that in the stop game, which is good. And it's quite efficient, um, which is also nice. Uh, another thing to keep costs down, as I am for some reason obsessed in costs, even though 0.24 isn't out yet. Annoyingly, it didn't quite get this to orbit, because that isn't designed for probes as heavy, so I just use a tiny bit of the transfer stage to, um, uh, well, the to finish off my orbit. But anyway, on moon rise I shall burn uh, at the moon. Basically, if you want to go to the moon, you can't be bothered to plan it. Wait till moon rise and then just burn until you get an encounter. That's how I do it. Anyway, um, because I haven't brought a huge amount of fuel, uh, I will need to be on a free return trajectory, although you, that's kind of difficult to do. So I'll need to be on a retrograde. I'm going to put myself into a retrograde orbit so that I can perform a small burn um, at Apogee? Perigee? Um, not perigee, para moon, para para moon, something like that. Um, I don't really understand all the terminology, and I'll have to do a 280 meters second burn, which is fine because I have more than that um, to come back. Although I'm not sure if that's actually more efficient than just going into a pro um, a prograde orbit and then just burning back. Anyway, I've made sure I orientate that at the sun, because often I forget to orientate non-rotating solar panels properly, and they kind of run out of power, and I lose my probe. Anyway, the most important thing now is that we take the materials bay scans to find out what the moon's upper orbits are like, um, what high above the moon is like even, I don't know, um, and uh, and what uh, the mystery guru is saying, and then we will warp down. Oh, and my god, I forgot to say, but I have called the satellite MO, the Moonar Orbit Explorer, but uh, it's more fun to call it MO, because it's the flaming MO. It will be soon. <gasps> When it deorbits, it's the flaming mo. If you don't watch The Simpsons, then I, uh, well, I don't actually watch it anymore. But I did a lot when I was a kid, so uh, yeah. So that's that's maybe where I got the name Mo. Anyway, we must also take the materials and Mr. Rigu experiment from down near the moon. And I'm getting like 75 science for the mystery. Oh uh, no, 75 science for the materials bay and 30 for the mystery goo. So I'm making sure I return this because um, that's a lot more science than transmitting it. So uh, I try not to transmit too much data and try to return as much as I can. But obviously, if I'm sending a probe out to Joule, I kind of want the data. So I'm not going to. And it would be much harder to return it. So it's, it's fine to transmit it sometimes. And that's quite high yield, whereas I would lose most of the science for this. Anyway. Um, Oh, and the solar panel arrangement there is actually 12, because there's only 8 symmetry. What I do is I do 2 times 6, and that form, uh, forms a perfect ring, which I quite like, because uh, there's never a blackout in the sun. But if you put 4 solar panels on, it'll be 
the fine because I mean the sun hits one side. Anyway, I'm going to move this back a little bit, and which um, I'm going to move the maneuver. I'm going to well, I'm going to perform the burn earlier, which drops the delta V needed quite considerably. So um, yeah, let's just drop our periaps down. We obviously aren't going to stay in orbit around the moon because we must return with our bountiful science. What is that? 140 plus. Yeah, like 200 science. That's pretty good yield for one mission, especially considering. Um, and I'm, yeah, basically I just wanted to get um, solar panels because once you've unlocked power generation, the, the solar system is your oyster. I mean, you can basically do what you like. Um, I do need to uh, perform a quick correction because annoyingly there are still some pretty hefty floating point errors on this uh, on KSP. They have improved it slightly. Basically, what that means is you, when you change influence sphere, it for some reason um, it, it your periaps or apple apps or whatever your orbit just changes slightly, which is kind of annoying. But um, they're working on it, especially for the asteroid thing. Or that would be very annoying. But anyway, we are now having, um, and now we are the flaming mo. Uh, yeah, if you, I'm, I'm hoping at least some people will understand the Simpsons reference. Because come on, Simpsons. Anyway, but uh, it's holding up pretty well. Um, that heat shield is one of the detachable ones. It, it didn't burn off too badly because it's only the moon. We're only coming back at about 3,000 meters a second. And I'm opening the chutes earlier, uh, early because I realized all the chutes are attached to the probe body and there's a chance it would rip off um, because I haven't strutted it or anything. But anyway, um, I think this is back into one times time accelerate, but with four times time accelerator in the game, yeah, there you go, something like that. But we must return it safely to the surface of Kerbin, obviously, so that we can acquire the science. But I can't find my shadow anywhere, so I have no idea how high I am above the ground. And I didn't think to use the mech job window that tells me that, so I just kind of slow the warp down because I. There's often when you are warping too fast, it'll um, fall over, that there'll be instabilities or something. So you know, it's best to land at one times time accelerate. Uh, anyway, that's safely down, which is lucky, so I will recover the vessel and uh, grab the science. How long? There's not much left of this episode. Uh, yeah, that's the final thing. 222 science. I thought I'd got less than that, but great. So, I will need to unlock... Um, well, what shall I unlock, actually? I think I'm going to unlock... Uh, what did I unlock? Bloody hell. Oh yeah, the plane wheels, because I want to be working on planes. and. I will save those plane parts for later, which is the wings, so that would actually be pretty important for planes, but I'll save it for later because I don't really need them right now. I'm not too bothered about that. Well, I think I'm going to go for the small fuel systems because I want that little Rocket Max engine for landing on the moon. That will be very important. Anyway, um, this has come to a close now. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I have, once again, forced tons of missions into it. Um, oh, no, nah, there's the end of the recording. <laughs> anyway, I've forced tons of missions into it. Uh, I hope not too many. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, as I say, get through science and get onto interesting things, and then I'll probably take it a little slower. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, if you have, feel free to like the video, that it would be wonderful. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.